Hello Spartan fans, welcome into our 2015 baseball preview. Head baseball coach Matt Fincher is alongside. And coach, it's that time again. It seems like the seasons just continue to roll by and you're finally ready to do away with some of the preparation and get into actual game action. How ready is your ball team? I think we're at this point, you know, we feel like we're preparing well and um, looking forward to the start of the season, no doubt. You're picked seventh in the Atlantic Sun, but your team is a year older with a little more experience under their belt. How do you think their preparation has gone in making that shift toward building a little stronger foundation with that experience? Well, certainly, you know, we had uh, so many freshmen last year and they got a lot of valuable play in time. Um, you know, we've got some JC transfers in here this year that hopefully will add uh, some age, let's say, and some experience. And I do think that uh, last year helped us, and I think that we should uh, compete uh, at a higher level this spring. You have four starters returning, not a lot, but you do have 12 arms back on your pitching staff. With this game a game that's dominated by arms, how much of a leg up do you feel like it gives you to have so many pitchers back this year? Yeah, well, I mean, we're happy with that because last year so many of the pitchers were, you know, it was their first time out of the shoot, so to speak, uh, either as freshmen or, you know, if you look at a guy like uh, Dylan Parker, his his first year in, in Division One baseball. So, uh, you know, certainly haven't been out there, pitched in the environment before, uh, gone on the road, uh, you know, the highs, the lows, all that goes into the season, uh, I, I think that that's going to help us. Your senior leadership is expected to come from Eric Samples. He was solid at second base for a year ago. He's also a dual threat as a player in that he plays the field and serves as a reliever for you. Talk about Samples and how important his play will be. Yeah, he's obviously he's very, very important to us. I mean, he's, he's the guy that's been here for four years that's going to be on the field daily, uh, you know, if his body allows. And so, uh, you know, we might see him like last year, possibly at a variety of positions. We're hopeful to get him on the mound at some point this spring. So, uh, yeah, when you have a guy that can do multiple things for you, uh, it certainly helps. And, uh, and it also helps that, you know, he's a senior this year and he's been through this three different times. Zach Kreider had an outstanding debut season for you a year ago. Is he showing signs of being ready to build upon that in his sophomore campaign? Yeah, I'm, I'm real excited about him. You know, his, he had some back issues the back half of last year. And, and uh, you know, this year he's healthy and uh, he's, he's done a good job trying to refine his swing. Certainly he's tried to simplify what it is he's trying to do. And he's been pretty consistent across the fall and the winter. And so, uh, we're, yeah, we're hopeful that he, he's going to have a, uh, a, a nice solid season and hit right there in the middle of the lineup and be very productive. Another guy your staff has been very high on is Jane Folks, who's coming of age for your ball club. Talk a little bit about the outfielder and what he brings to the table. Well, James uh, transferred in from Walter State, where he, you know, he hit some home runs over there for them, and and uh, you know he's in the in the process of transitioning from junior college baseball to Division One baseball. He's done a wonderful job uh, shortening up his swing, considering some things about uh, his approach at the plate, and uh, you know he. Uh, has shown me an awful lot. Um, you know, real pleased with his progress. I think that uh, he, you know, he's one of the guys that we're going to point at and say, you know, hey, we need him to have a, a solid season for us to compete in this conference. With only the four starting position players back, walk us through the depth that you have and what we can expect to see at some of the different positions on the field. Well, a catcher, you know, Luke graduated, Luke Weber, so, you know, you're going to see a new catcher, a full-time catcher, and right now uh, you have Jordan Miller, who's returning from last year, and he's, he's performed well, and he's gonna, certainly going to get a, a good bit of playing time, and, and he's being pushed by a freshman named Charlie Carpenter that I have really been impressed with. Uh, he's having some back issues right now, but hopefully we're going to get that sorted out, and he'll be ready to go here in a couple of weeks. Um, at first base, uh, you know, it's our thought process right now that Kreider's going to play first base again. Uh, you know, as we sit here today, I would anticipate Samples playing second base. Um, shortstop, uh, you know, Daniel Fickus is back, and, and, you know, obviously he's going to get the first crack at shortstop. But Jordan Ford has, uh, you know, he didn't get to practice a lot in the fall, but he's been back this winter. He's healthy. He, he's shown us some things, so we're hopeful that, uh, you know, he's going to play a little bit his freshman year. We'll see, we'll see how his bat develops and see how it goes. Uh, but, you know, you keep your fingers crossed for him. Uh, Jake Beaver is a uh, JC transfer from Wake Tech that, uh, will probably uh, play a good bit at third base. Uh, he's a left-handed hitter. Uh, he, he, you know, if he goes well, he'll, he'll definitely change our lineup. Um, you know, there's some, there's some pop in his bat, um, but hitting from the left side is something that we need. And so, you know, Jake's a guy we're looking at. Um, the outfield, uh, 
you know, Stephen Dowling is back, so he's competing for playing time. If he doesn't play in the outfield, I would, I would look at him as, as the potential DH at the start of the season. Uh, J.J. Shimko is a freshman from Jacksonville, Florida, that uh, is going to get an opportunity to play in left. He's a left-handed hitter, and so, you know, he's another guy that could add a lot to our lineup if he goes well. Uh, we're going to start the season in likelihood with folks in center, and then we have another J.C. transfer uh, named Cody Britton that's going to get a shot at right field. So, uh, you know, you got some new JC guys in the lineup, we hope, that, that add some experience. You got some returning players that have been through this, and, and you've got some, some freshmen that are competing for playing time. So, what you got is a, is, is a nice little mix uh, through the lineup, in my opinion. Certainly something to keep an eye on. College rotation is always a very fluid situation, and it'll play itself out, I know, as the year rolls on. But as you head into the season, what does your rotation look like right now? We're very hopeful that uh, Dylan Parker, as returning pitcher, is going to be right in the middle of things. Uh, we're looking at Richie LaSalle to compete for time there. Tyler Jackson has transferred in from Lancaster, and, and uh, he, he, you know, he's going to compete for time there. Um, and, and we have uh, three or four other guys, quite honestly, that we're looking at. Um, you know, nothing is, is set at this point in time. So, you know, we're just con continuing uh, the evaluation process, so to speak, and, 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 and see where it goes. I mean, I'd really love to see these guys compete this weekend and next weekend and somebody, you know, a couple of them really lock it down. I mean, I'm very comfortable with Dylan Parker in the, in the starting rotation. So, you know, he's got experience. He, he performed well uh, at the back half of last year, uh, and I have every reason to believe he's going to take another step uh, this year, uh, you know the other ones. You know they they need to they need to show us something. They do. Your schedule shapes up nicely with a ton of home games. You've got 34 here in the friendly confines of Harley Park. Talk about your schedule and, and how it looks to you as you break it down. Well, re real pleased with it. Um, you know, the, for the most part, for the first month, we're at home. And so, uh, you know, it gives an, a guys an opportunity to get acclimated with the season. Uh, you know, missing class academics is, is a non-concern at that point because we're not going to miss a lot of school this spring, quite honestly. So, uh, real pl proud of the schedule. I'm also pleased with the schedule as far as it shapes up with regard to the, the level of the teams we're playing against. We have a very good schedule schedule this year and you know anyone that's followed this program knows that you know I, I do want a difficult schedule and I don't you know and we've done that again this year and I think uh, you know the the very first weekend uh, you know between Dayton BC and Army I mean those are three solid programs we're gonna play them and and uh, you know every weekend is gonna be like that so um, you know, you play the front half of the season, so to speak, to prepare for the conference uh, round robin, if you will, and and hopefully, uh, you know, we've created a schedule here that will assist in us doing that. Got a couple of in-state programs, College of Charleston, and then a road trip to South Carolina on your schedule, playing teams that have NCAA experience across the last several years, some of the best programs in the country. Playing at that level against those type teams, you really feel like get your team battle tested for what's to come in the yeah, conference. I mean, we, yeah, I mean we have to do that because we and we want to do that but we but we have to because that's where we want to go. Yeah, you know, and, and, and we want to compete that's our uh, desire, uh, our ambition is to compete at that level. That's what we're trying to do here. And um, yeah, the only way to, to move forward is play good teams and compete with them and, and see what happens. When you work your way into A Sun play and that battle for the championship and a berth in the NCAA tournament, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of different look in the Atlantic Sun conference this year. How does it affect you if at all that there are a couple less teams in the conference? Well, you know, the first thing that, uh, yeah, two teams leaving, um, you know, I don't know that that really impacts that much. You know, the athletic directors decided to contract the, uh, the baseball tournament uh, from eight teams to six. So that does impact uh, us substantially in my mind. Um, I was disappointed in that because, you know, everyone else is expanding their tournament, quite honestly. We'll be the only Division I uh, conference in the South that only has six teams in it. So, uh, you know, we've got to fight to get into the top six, and, uh, you know, we know what we've got to do, so there won't be any excuses. Uh, and, and we'll just see how it goes. Kennesaw State once again picked to win the Atlantic Sun Conference as many would expect. Florida Gulf Coast, of course, expected to be there and battle for it. Lipscomb always has a tough team. Size up the conference briefly for us if you can. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It, it's, it's, a, it's a great conference. I mean, you name those three teams and, and you know, I'm going to throw out North Florida and Jacksonville and Stetson, you know, and I know Northern Kentucky's getting better every year that they're in the, in the conference. So this is an extremely competitive conference. And, and I think that's why the baseball coaches wanted eight teams in the conference tournament because they, they know that the quality of play that's in this conference. 
Certainly going to be exciting to watch those games as they transpire, as everybody, anybody can beat anybody on any given day in this conference. That has been proven over the last couple of years. Yes. 18 years you have been the head baseball coach here mm -hmm. at Upstate. You take this team, you take a look at it. How does it compare to some of the other teams you've had here in strengths and in weaknesses? Well, I think it's similar. I mean, you know, we, we've started a lot of years here uh, with question uh, the question mark being the pitching staff. I mean, we this team's going to be offensive at times. This team's going to play adequate defense most days. Um, you know, and it's just a matter of, uh, you know, how our pitching staff develops. And, and, you know, from when we got here in August and started things to where we are today, I think that they're developing well. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of can we, can we continue to develop across the season? And if this group can do this, I think that this group uh, has a chance to be plenty competitive. Well, Coach, we thank you for your time, and we wish you all the best in the 2015 season. All right, thanks, Jason. You can keep up with everything related to the baseball program and all Upstate athletics at UpstateSpartans.com.